It's Friday, May 22nd, and it's time for your Barbados Today morning news update. The Queen Elizabeth Hospital will drastically change the way it operates when it fully reopens after the COVID-19 pandemic. Word of this from Acting Director of Medical Services at the state-run hospital, Dr. Clyde Cave. He told a press conference yesterday, smaller clinic sizes, a pharmacy medication delivery system, limited visiting, spaced sitting, and the upgrading of the hospital's appointment system were among some of the changes which patients and visitors to the QEH could expect. He said the hospital could ill afford to operate in the same manner pre-COVID-19. As the country opens up, we also have to try and resume services at the um, hospital. But from what we've learned, it's going to be a new normal. And I guess the most important thing um, that we have learned is we can't go back to how we were before. For at least the foreseeable future, it's not going to work. And maybe this is a gift in that some of the things that we know were suboptimal before, this gives us the opportunity to correct. So what have we been doing wrong? The next one. Crowding is no longer acceptable. Even from a meeting like this, we have to social distance. And anybody who has been into the hospital knows that this facility that is more than half a century old was not designed to keep people at what is now an acceptable personal distance apart. Meantime, Dr. Cave said no doctors, nurses or patients awarded at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital have tested positive for COVID-19 to date. However, 12 people who visited the Accident and Emergency Department tested positive for the virus. Nope. We have had nurses who have been tested and no doctors, um, as far as we are aware, have contracted um, it in the hospital. For confidentiality um, reasons, you know, uh, we would, may not be aware um, as an employer if somebody is off on sick leave. Um, but I believe the total number of identified cases in the country um, at this time is today at 90 or something like that, which is still relatively small. And so far, we've been really lucky um, that compared to other healthcare um, workers throughout the world, ours have been protected so far. Um, the ones that we have watched especially um, closely were all the workers who looked after the initial sick patients over at the Enmore Isolation Facility before they moved down to Harrison Point, and none of those um, health workers um, have contracted um, COVID-19. Dr. Cave also dismissed a report that one of the seven people who died from COVID-19 had been warded at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital prior to being diagnosed with the virus. Not as far as I am aware for a patient in our hospital setting, meaning the inpatients. Our accident and emergency department is obviously our interface with the community. That's why, as Dr. Williams said, we've had to rearrange the whole accident and emergency department and move the relatively well ones upstairs and the potentially affected ones kept downstairs until we can determine what their status is. And some of the COVID infections did present to the hospital and they were down there and some of those have um, subsequently um, demised. So, Literally, they would have been a hospital patient while they were here, but they were not an inpatient on, on, on the ward. Dr. Shaney Williams, Clinical Director, Emergency Services Directorate at the QEH, revealed that the hospital had not recorded a positive COVID-19 test for over a month. So we've received, we've tested several patients and of them 12 were positive so far we, and the last one was around the 11th of April so we haven't had any positive tests although we still continue to test patients as they come to the emergency department since then. In other news this Friday 
private landowners in Barbados are being warned to secure their properties from trespassers and squatters. The warning came in a recent audit which showed an alarming 70% jump in cases of squatting on government lands. Terra Caribbean, in its 2020 edition of the Red Book, examined the growing issue of adverse possession, where squatters claim legal title to land they have lived on for a period of time without paying rent and have not been asked by the owner to leave. The regional real estate company said statistics show that squatting was becoming a major headache not only for government but for private landowners as well. It advised landowners to regularly inspect properties and, if possible, implement measures to reduce trespassing and squatting if they do not want to risk losing the title hat to someone else. There's regional and international news after this short break. In news from the region, the Trinidad High Court has ordered Brian Stone, the former chairman of the Caribbean New Media Group, to pay Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley $350,000 TT following a defamation lawsuit. In October 2019, Dr. Rowley sued Stone for statements he made in 2017 and posted them on Facebook. We get more about the ruling in this report from TV6's Joel Brown. Mr. Stone has been ordered by the court to pay general damages in the sum of $300,000 and aggravated damages of $50,000 with interest at the rate of 2.5% from February 22, 2018 to May 21, 2020. The court also ruled that costs on the prescribed basis in the sum of $35,078.01 also be paid to Dr. Rowley. TV6 News contacted Mr. Stone via telephone for comment. I think I believe the, uh, it was a low figure compared to others, it's, even though it's a very high figure from my pocket. It was a low figure, I believe it's 350000 plus. plus. Um, and um, that, that particular defamation case, we are going to appeal. We are going to be, appeal the uh, penalty. Um, he won judgment, not in court, he won judgment really by default which meant was there was supposed to be a defense, we were going to put in a defense, and um, the lawyers were late, and they immediately went to get judgment. And finally, on the international front, a motorist who filmed the shooting of an unarmed black man in the U.S. state of Georgia has become the third person to be charged with his murder. More in this report from Reuters TV. The man who videotaped the killing of an unarmed black man, Ahmad Arbery, was arrested on Thursday as the third white suspect in the racially charged case. William Roddy Bryan Jr. was charged with felony murder and attempt to commit false imprisonment of Arbery in the February shooting. That's according to a statement from the Georgia Bureau of Investigation. The footage has sparked outrage from civil rights activists who see it as the latest incident of U.S. law enforcement allowing white perpetrators to go unpunished in the unjustified killing of a black man. Brian previously came forward as the man who recorded a video of Arbery's murder. He turned the footage over to investigators before it was widely spread on social media earlier this month. The video showed Arbery jogging in Brunswick, Georgia, before being confronted and shot to death by two armed white men, George McMichael and his son Travis. Both men were arrested and charged with murder earlier this month. The state attorney general is investigating local police and prosecutors' handling of the case. Brian's attorney, Kevin Guff, could not be immediately reached for comment on his arrest. Brian's attorney has told the media that his client has no relationship to the other two suspects and told police he was a bystander to the confrontation. That's news. 
But for the very latest, visit us at www.barbadistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.